Hey Fright fans, Scott from Fright Props here, and today we're going to be installing our head turn servo kit onto a plastic skeleton. The skeleton we're using here is one from Home Depot, but this same idea would work with pretty much any of these plastic skeletons they can get from any of the big box retailers. So for this one, the first thing we're going to do is actually remove the head. And if we turn it over here, you'll see there's a couple screws here. We're just going to back those out and then remove the head from the neck piece here. All right, once those screws are removed, in this case, we should just be able to pop the head off. And now we have our skull that we can work with and set the body aside for now. Now for this skull, there's this kind of raised little collar here. We're gonna to wanna to remove that. What we want is a flat surface, and then we're gonna notch out an area for a servo to fit inside here. So to remove this, I'm just gonna use some snips, and I'm just gonna clip off this plastic ring. Now I'll just come in and sort of clean up some of the rough edges. Trying to make sure I get as flat a surface here as I can so that we can notch out a little area and then mount the servo inside. All right, that should work pretty well. So what we're going to be doing here is using what's called a servo block to actually mount the servo into the skull and provide some other mounting attachment points. This is the bracket for that. And what we're going to want to do is use this as our template to cut out this internal area so that we have room for the servo to sit inside the skull when this is attached to the base. So to do that, I'm just gonna hold it against the base of the skull. And then I'm going to use a marker here and I'm just gonna outline as best I can the inside of the servo block mounting bracket here so that I know how much I need to cut away from the skull in order to create the room for the servo body to seat down in here and sit inside the skull. All right, so the next step is gonna to be to remove this material here where we've marked it. And to do that, I have a bunch of medieval implements here that I'm gonna just get to work on this skull with, do a little surgery and remove that piece of plastic. All right, well, it's not pretty, but that ought to do the job here. Uh, in retrospect, probably would have been better to use like a Dremel or maybe even a hot knife or something to cut through that. Uh, the plastic here is actually quite a bit thicker than some of the other skulls we've worked with in the past. But uh, lining this up, we should be pretty good to go. Uh, we'll be able to fit the servo in there. So the next step is going to be to assemble the servo block. All right, so here are the pieces of the servo block. This is the bracket from earlier. These are going to be the two side mounts that go on either side. This is the top mount, and this is the servo hub shaft. We're gonna be using a hub shaft uh, servo block for this application. And there's a bunch of M4 bolts and a couple washers here as well. So next up, we're gonna take our servo here. We're using the Fright Props Premium Heavy Duty Servo. We're gonna go ahead and open that up. There's a bag of um, arms and, and screws and stuff. We're gonna set that aside. We will need one of the screws, um, this little black one, if you can see that here. We're gonna to need to actually attach this um, hub shaft to the spindle of the servo. So we'll set that aside and we can take out the servo. So here we have that. And the first thing we're gonna do is install the bracket onto the servo. We're gonna pass the wire through the bracket and then snug it up here into the servo block bracket itself. Then we're going to go ahead and use some of these um, bolts here to fasten the servo to the servo block mounting bracket, and these are the ones that you want to use the little washers on. So we'll go ahead and put the washer onto the bolt, and then we can screw the bolt through the threaded holes in the servo block mounting bracket here. You want to keep these a little bit loose before you go all the way around because it can be a little bit tricky to match the holes all up if these are tight. So leave them loose, make sure you get uh, the bolts in place before you tighten them all down. We'll be using a three millimeter hex wrench here to help thread them in and then do the final tightening once they're all in place. But this can be helpful because as I said, it's a little bit tricky to get them to line up sometimes. So having a little bit of extra um, leverage here can help get the threaded bolts lined up with the holes in the mounting bracket and get them started.
And then once you get each of the bolts uh, seated into the threads here, you can just go ahead and tighten them up. I like to kind of work my way around, not fully tightening any of them until the bracket is nicely seated up against the mounting uh, brackets there of the servo. And then you can snug everything up nice and tight. Okay, so it should look like that when you're done installing the servo block bracket. And next we're gonna go ahead and put the side mounts on. So there are two side mounts. You'll notice they have a flush side and an indented side. You want the flush side to be out and you wanna position them so that when you put on the top brace, it's gonna center over the top of the servo gear shaft there. So you want to put them kind of down towards one end here. And to secure those on, you're just going to hold them in place, come around from the back side, and use bolts to thread through the holes here into the threaded holes on these side mounts. Once again, we'll get them started a little bit. We won't fully tighten until we get both in place. Okay, then we can go ahead and use our three millimeter hex wrench here to tighten those down. And we'll go ahead and do the other side. Same thing, we want the flush side to face outward and we want it to be down here near the end of the servo where the actual gear shaft is. And we'll tighten those down as well. Okay, once those are in place, we can install the top piece, which just goes right on top of these four threaded points here. You'll notice again, we have a um, kind of protruding side here and a flush side. The flush side goes down towards the servo with the sort of protruding ring mount going upward. And we'll go ahead and just insert bolts into all four of these threaded receptacles here. And again, leaving it a little bit loose so I have some play uh, before I fully tighten down to make sure I can kind of wiggle this around as needed if the holes aren't lining up perfectly. And actually for this one, I'm gonna leave this a bit loose before I put the hub in as well so that I have play in here when I'm trying to put this hub down onto that uh, servo gear. So these I'm just hand tightening again because next we're gonna actually insert the hub shaft into the servo. So that goes right down here through the center and it's gonna line up with the threaded or the toothed gear there. Um, and you might have to wiggle it around a little bit. Might even be good to leave some of these a little bit loose as well here, these bolts that we actually tightened earlier, um, just to give yourself as much play as you can while you're trying to seat this hub shaft onto that servo spindle, cause it's gonna be tricky and having a little bit of play in the whole assembly is gonna be helpful. So let's go ahead and see if we can get it to line up there. There we go. And that actually is seated right on, which is nice. So once that is seated on, we can go ahead and retrieve that black screw, the one that we were talking about earlier from our bag of servo accessories, and just drop that into the center, and then use a long screwdriver to get down in there and screw the hub shaft to the servo gear. and then you should just feel it tighten up, secured in place. And now we can go ahead and head back around and tighten up all of these bolts. And we'll go ahead and tighten the ones here around the top as well. All right, and there we have our fully assembled servo bracket with the hub shaft. You should be able to rotate the shaft with a little bit of resistance and hear the gears turning inside the servo. All right, so next up, we're gonna insert the servo into the skull. And what I'm looking for here is just to make sure that I have some openings that I can put some screws into that are actually gonna connect to the skull. So I'm gonna be installing it this way. 
um, because I want this uh, these open holes here to be flush with some of the plastic. So I'm just going to take the servo, insert it into that hole that we excavated earlier, and press it into place. And now we can just go ahead and screw the servo block to the skull using some pan head screws. All right, so the key here is that you're going to want to make sure you give it a lot of pressure when you put the pan head screw through the hole and onto the skull. When you screw it into the skull, just make sure you're applying a good amount of pressure so that the screw bites into the plastic of the skull. And we'll go ahead and add screws into the other open holes in the servo uh, block mount. Trying to make sure that the servo stays somewhat level here. And we'll do one more. All right, so now we have the servo with the hub shaft servo block mounted to the base of the skull. And now we can attach this to a bracket to attach it to the spine of the skeleton. Now the last thing I wanna do before I do that is make sure that we're somewhat centered here. So I'm gonna turn the servo hub shaft all the way to the left and then turn it right about there so that it's centered between its farthest left and farthest right position. All right, so we're gonna be using this L-shaped bracket, which is gonna to attach to our hub shaft here, and then we're gonna use that to mount it to the spine of the skeleton. We have four uh, M4 12 millimeter bolts, which we're just going to use to thread through the holes here on the L-shaped bracket into these threaded holes here on the hub. So we can line it up first, take a look at where we're going. That should work good there. Same deal as before, we're just gonna leave these slightly loose so that it's easier to line up all our holes before we tighten everything. And we'll use our hex wrench to snug them all the way up. I like to kind of work my way around just like you're tightening nuts on a car tire. Kind of go in a star pattern. All right, once those are kind of all the way down, we can just give them a final tighten here to make sure they're nice and snug. And we have now installed our bracket, so we can test it, see how it turns. Looks pretty good there that we're getting a good even rotation from side to side, not too much in any direction. We will be setting the limits of the servo later so we can control how far it looks left and right. So next up, we're gonna install this onto the skeleton. All right, so what we're gonna to wanna to do here is take this and install it here onto the neck bone, actually on the back like this. But we don't wanna put it way up here or else he's gonna have a super long neck. So we're gonna want it right about here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the um, vertebrae off of the neck bone here on the skeleton. So I'll just mark this position so I remember where I'm cutting. And then we'll go to town on it again with our tools. Um, again, probably using like a jigsaw or something would be the easiest to slice through this, but I'm just gonna to try to use some hand tools because that's what I have here. All right, so we have, uh, however, artlessly <laughs> removed these uh, neck bones here, so we can just get rid of those. And next, we're gonna just take this and screw this bracket here to the back of that spine so that it sits just like that. So we'll just line up that bracket to where we wanna mount it. We'll hold it in place and we use pan head screws to screw it to the neck bone. All right, that should do it. Now we can go ahead and sit him up and start working on programming the servo. All right, so to program the movements of the servo, we're gonna be using our Pico servo controller. This is a great controller for servo applications, obviously, because it's meant for servos. It can control up to four different servos, so you can have four different servo animations all playing at the same time, so you can create a complex character as well. We're just gonna be using one right now. It also has two trigger inputs, so you can have two different shows one that's activated by trigger input one, and another that's activated by trigger input two. And of course you can loop the show as well, so that it just plays on repeat as long as the Pico servo is powered up. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is connect the servo to the Pico servo controller. The first thing you'll probably notice as we take our servo wire out here is that it's relatively short. We're not gonna want our controller way up here by his shoulder, so what we're gonna do is use an extender cable to extend this down to where the Pico servo is gonna be. So I have a servo extension cable here. We're just gonna line up the colors. So 
black or brown to black, then red, and then yellow to either yellow or orange. Just make sure they're lined up. Insert these two together. Now we'll take the other end and plug it into the Pico servo. There are four servo outputs here, and the same deal, there'll be a black wire, a red, and a yellow. Sometimes that's brown, red, and orange. Um, but basically you just wanna make sure that your wires are lined up the same order as those colors are listed here. And you wanna make sure that this pin connector gets on all the pins. So we're gonna just make sure it lines up nicely here and insert it like that. Now we're ready to actually start controlling the servo. So the first thing you always wanna do when working with servos is to actually set the parameters of the servo. We're gonna set the limits of the servo and the servo speed. And in order to do that with the Pico servo, when you power up, you're gonna hold down this button until the top LED flashes green and let it go. We have a six volt power supply here. So I'm just gonna insert that while holding down the button. When the light flashes green, I can let go and we're now in our settings menu. So the first setting here is gonna be the input mode. You have five choices. We're gonna use choice number one, which is just the default mode. The other choices are basically combinations of whether or not the uh, trigger inputs here are interruptible or not, or how they interact with each other. But we're just gonna be using a looped trigger for this uh, demonstration here. So we'll just go ahead and press the button to set this to one for mode one default. Next up, we're gonna select our servo. So you can see here now, if I start turning the wheel, it's gonna walk through the four different servo outputs. We're on output one here, so I'm gonna go ahead and click the button for output one. Next, we have the output mode, and you have three options here as well. You basically have the default mode, which allows the servo to sleep when it's not active. You have a mode where it will not sleep, and then you have an on-off mode for controlling something like an LED light, like a six-volt LED. So we're gonna go to mode one here and select that. Now here are our servo limits. So this is where we're gonna set how far the servo can turn. So first we're gonna set the left limit. So we're gonna turn them all the way to our left here and set that as the left limit. And then we're gonna set the right limit and turn them right to about there and set that. The final setting here is gonna be the maximum acceleration of the servo. So if you want the servo to be able to move very fast, you wanna go ahead and set that all the way up. If you wanna to try to keep it slower, you can set it kind of in a medium speed and then that will be as fast as the servo ever moves. So we're gonna set it relatively fast just so we have the option to move it fast. And in fact, we'll turn it all the way up if we want to. And then I'm gonna hit the uh, button here again to save. Once we've done those steps, it'll kick us back to the servo selection menu. So here, if you had more servers to program, you could go and do that. Since we don't, I'm just gonna go all the way to the left and hit the button one more time. So now we're actually in programming mode. So you can see here that we now have full control over the turning of the head with the dial here on top of the Pico servo. And we can go ahead and record a sequence. To do that, we're just gonna hold this button until the LED starts flashing red, then let it go, act out our sequence, and tap recording into save. All right, so now that sequence has been stored inside the Pico server, and when we hit play, it'll play it back. And that animation will actually include any pre or post delay that we bake into it. So if we wanted it to rest a little bit between activations, if we're planning to loop the trigger input, we would just go ahead and add um, basically blank animation to the end of the show. So let's go ahead and wire up a looped trigger real quick so I can show you how that works. All right, so I've installed some wires here to the controller to actually loop the trigger input. So you can see I have a wire going from plus to C here, that's a jumper wire. And then I have another wire jump from negative to one. So what this is doing is it's just constantly triggering input one. So that show that we recorded for input one on the controller is just gonna play over and over again on repeat. Now my goal with this series is to actually use the same skeleton and to install a bunch of our servo kits on it and make a kind of finished product of a fully animated servo driven skeleton. So there's some other things that we would do here. Um, we would use some reinforcement material here to make sure this neck isn't getting too loose because it's already jiggling around a lot. And then we would do some decorative stuff to sort of hide the servo elements. So those are things we're gonna cover in a later video once we kind of look at some of our other servo kits. So stay tuned for that. And of course, as always, if you have any questions, you can leave a comment on this video or send us an email at sales at Thanks a lot, see you next time.